Good evening everyone. Today our channel reached 136 subscribers. Thank you all so much for your support. Welcome back to Medwits Made Simple. In this video we are going to be talking about Down Syndrome. Down Syndrome is one of the most common chromosomal disorders uh, known to men and it is a major cause of mental retardation. The most common genetic cause for Down syndrome is trisomy 21 and it is caused due to meiotic non-disjunction. Now in this representation you can see that in chromosome number 21 there is an additional chromosome. Now this occurs because of meiotic non-disjunction which means failure of the sister chromatids to separate uh, during meiosis and that will lead to an additional 21st chromosome and this is responsible for trisomy 21 and these patients will have 47 chromosomes instead of 46 in a normal human. So the major factor which is known to have association with trisomy 21 and with Down syndrome is maternal age which means the age at which the women gets pregnant. So if the woman gets pregnant uh, at the age of about 45 or more than that, what happens is there is increased risk of um, the fetus uh, getting Down syndrome. Okay, so this is because and, and uh, they have found out this thing by research that uh, about the age of 45 years, um, the ovum in the women is more prone to develop meiotic non-disjunction and this is uh, thought to be uh, responsible for increased chances of developing Down syndrome in the fetuses of women who get pregnant about 45 years of age. So if you find a pregnant woman who is about the age of 45, um, you need to suspect uh, that there are more risks or chances of her baby uh, of developing Down syndrome and you need to screen her fetus for that. So there are other chromosomal anomalies which are responsible for Down syndrome and they are quite rare but, but we need to mention them as well. So this includes Robertsonian translocation and that accounts for 4% of the cases and mosaicism which accounts for just 1% of the cases. So after seeing this you need to have a clear <clears throat> clear idea that in most of the cases uh, Down syndrome is caused by trisomy 21 and these two can also cause Down syndrome but it's very rare as you can see here and you also need to know that uh, mental retardation and many features of Down syndrome are more common in trisomy 21 but in these cases they are quite rare the child has many chances of surviving and living a normal life if it's known to have Down syndrome by any of these causes. And maternal age is also not associated with these two causes of Down syndrome. So if you guys want a detailed explanation on Robertsonian translocation or mosaicism, please do comment below and I'll make a video on that too. So now let's talk about the clinical features of Down syndrome. So the patients with Down syndrome is known to have a flat facial profile and they have oblique palpable fissures, epicanthic folds and abandoned neck skin. So if you look at them they will be uh, they can be easily identified just by looking at them and they have flat faces and which means the face looks flat and the palpable fissure which is the gap between the upper and lower eyelid uh, it will be obliquely placed in them. In a normal human being uh, the palpable fissure is normally placed transversely but in them it is placed a little bit obliquely and there are something known as epicanthic folds which are very helpful in diagnosing um, or identifying Down syndrome. Epicanthic folds are nothing but additional folds of skin which are present above the canthus which is nothing but the medial part of the eye. That, 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 that area is known as canthus and if you see a fold of skin over that that is known as epicanthic folds. There are also they have uh, they also are known to have abundant neck skin, so their skin may appear thick. So this picture is taken from Wikimedia, 
and as you can see here this child is known this child has flat faces uh, the face looks flat and uh, the the palpable fissure is a bit oblique and this child also has epicanthic folds in the middle part of the eye so the other features of down syndrome could not be made out in this picture but we'll talk about that too in the next slide so patients with down syndrome have a very high risk of developing mental retardation and most of the patients will have low IQ level. There are other features such as semi increases in palms uh, which is a different type of crease which can be identified in the palms of the patients and patients with Down syndrome are at more risk of having congenital heart defects most commonly atrial septal defects and ventricular septal defects. So these patients are also predisposed to developing leukemia which is blood cancer. They have poor immunity so they are more prone to develop infections and they are also known to uh, develop autoimmune diseases such as autoimmune thyroiditis. They are also uh, at more risk of developing neurologic disease such as Alzheimer's disease about the age of 40. How to diagnose uh, Down syndrome? In a patient who's uh, sitting in front of you, it's so obvious to diagnose them by just looking at their features. But uh, the most important thing is to diagnose Down syndrome in a fetus, uh, in a mother, and that can be done by a technique known as FISH, which is expanded as fluorescence in situ hybridization. So first, you need to take out uh, a sample from the fetus or mother like you can take the amniotic fluid by amniocentesis or you can now recently there are techniques um, by which you can diagnose down syndrome with the blood of the pregnant woman itself because uh, in the blood of pregnant women there is some amount of fetus blood and we can diagnose down syndrome of the fetus from the mother itself which is kind of non-invasive technique so the fluorescent in situ hybridization which is uh, abbreviated as fish is a prenatal diagnostic test. It can detect anomalies like trisomy 21. So Down syndrome is not always lethal. For example, I told you that in cases like Robertsonian translocation and mosaicism, there are chances that the patients may have normal IQ level or near normal IQ level and they can live a normal life to some extent. So we came to the end of today's video. If you like this video, um, please leave a like and please help me make more videos by donating me on www.patreon.com slash medwithsmadesimple and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon for more videos. Thank you.